Hello. I'd like to work on some uh, graphical and uh, pictorial representations for the constant acceleration model today. So I have a situation here. Starting from rest, you jog forwards while steadily increasing your speed for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, you continue forward, but now gradually slow down until you come to a stop. I've got some axes drawn here already. Uh, for a position versus time graph. I can tell it's a position versus time graph because, of course, I'm reading the labels on my axes. So X for position, uh, T for time, and let's say position in meters, time in seconds. Now, I know that for the first 10 seconds, I'm moving forwards means I'm going to have to have a positive velocity. And steadily increasing my speed means that the slope of that graph is going to have to be getting continually steeper and steeper and steeper. So I need a graph that's going upwards on my axis, but upwards on the position axis, but increasing in steepness. Now, the information that I have to work with doesn't say anything about a starting location. So I'll just go with the easiest starting location and say I'm measuring uh, positions from my starting point. So I'm going to start at a position of zero meters. I've got uh, my times marked off on the axis here, 10 seconds. So from zero until 10 seconds, I'm going to need a graph that is showing an increasing slope going up on the graph. So I'm going to draw something like this, uh, just like the parabola shapes that we've seen in our experimental work so far. So that covers the first 10 seconds. If I use my slopeometer, then I can see that this graph is getting progressively steeper and steeper and steeper as I move along to higher values of time. Now, after 10 seconds, once I'm here, you continue to move forwards. So moving forwards means that the graph still has to go up to higher numbers on the position axis. Except if we're also now slowing down, in order to slow down, then the graph has to be getting less and less and less and less steep. So I need a line that slopes upwards, but is getting less and less and less and less steep. So I'm going to draw that now. So less and less and less and less and less steep. until you come to a stop. Now, what's the slope of my graph when I have come to a stop? That would be where I have zero slope. So if I do this perfectly, then by the time I get to 20 seconds, then my graph is exactly horizontal. And I didn't do it quite perfectly. There was still a little bit of a slope there. So maybe there, I'll flatten that out a little bit. So the slopeometer now from 10 until 20 seconds, we're going up still, a positive slope, but getting less and less and less and less steep. And by the time I reach 20 seconds now, ideally then my slopeometer would be showing that that graph was perfectly flat. So I didn't do it perfectly, but close enough, I think, to get the point across. I could have drawn a graph that looks the same shape, but starting at any other position, because I didn't actually have information about position to work with here. So I could have drawn a graph that started at a higher value for position and increased in slope until we get to 10 seconds. And then after 10 seconds decreases in slope until it flattens out. Or I could have drawn a graph that starts behind the zero place. The zero place isn't a special location. Um, it's just where we happen to set the zero of our meter stick. So I could have started behind here and still moving forwards, getting faster and faster until 10 seconds, and then getting slower and slower and slower. Like any of those would be uh, valid graphs to draw since there wasn't any information about a starting location. So I could take any one of those graphs, and if I drew them really carefully, then they would all look identical, just shifted up or down on the position axis. If I wanted to draw a motion map for this motion, well then, and I'm going to make my dots every two seconds. 
So I'll even put that as a key there. One dot equals two seconds. Since that's different from our standard of one dot for each second, but I don't want to draw a bazillion dots here. So I'm going to start off then at a time of zero seconds. Now I'm not going fast at the beginning, so my next dot should be close to that one. So let's say two seconds is nearby. And then uh, four seconds, I travel a little bit farther because I'm faster now. Six seconds, I go even farther. And so my dots are getting spread apart as I move onward because as I'm getting faster and faster and faster, then I travel farther in each increment of time. And I could even draw some tiny arrows here. And these arrows, if I drew this exactly to scale, because I have a constant acceleration, then these velocity arrows would be growing at the same rate. Each arrow would be bigger than the one before it by the same amount. They would all grow by the same amount each time. But I didn't draw this perfectly, but well, hopefully we're getting the point across. And then after 10 seconds now, I am getting less and less and less far. I'm slowing down now. And so now my dots need to be getting closer and closer and closer together again. So now I need to start drawing my dots increasingly close together. And now my arrows are getting shorter in length. And again, if I drew this perfectly to scale, it would take me a lot longer to draw for sure. And also then each of these arrows would be shorter by the same amount each time. This arrow would be shorter than this one by the same amount as this one is shorter than this one is shorter by the same amount this one compared to that one and so on. So here we have a motion map where our dots for the first 10 seconds are getting further and further and further spread apart. And then the last 10 seconds are getting closer and closer together. So if I want to make a velocity versus time graph, then my velocity starts out at zero. Now, unlike the position graph, this is not an option. We started from rest. We started from a velocity of zero, and that is not up for negotiation. Like, where is the starting position? Where is the zero location is up for negotiation. We started from zero velocity. There's no questioning that one. So for the first 10 seconds, we move forwards. And I'm just going to identify where is 10 seconds there. We move forwards for 10 seconds with an increasing velocity. So I need a graph that slopes upward for the first 10 seconds. And this graph is showing as time increases, the velocity is increasing. And all of these velocities here above zero, here's zero velocity. These are all velocities above zero, larger and larger and larger amounts above zero. So the velocities are getting increasingly uh, fast forwards in the forwards direction. Now the last 10 seconds, we're still moving forwards and we can tell on a velocity versus time graph, we see forwards versus backwards by looking at the sign of the velocities. And above zero are positive velocities, below zero are negative velocities. Negative velocity is going backwards, positive velocity is going forwards. So I still need positive velocities but getting closer and closer and closer to zero. And by the time of 20 seconds, I should end up back at a stop again because we come to a stop in the end. And so now I need to draw a line that goes back down to zero, to zero meters per second. Now this graph shows always moving forwards because the velocities were always above zero. So if we were looking at a position versus time graph, that downward sloping line would indicate moving backwards. But this is a velocity versus time graph, not a position versus time graph.
And so this is showing velocities that are forwards just slower and slower and slower until we come to a stop. So this graph is showing always forwards motion, but getting faster and then getting slower. The last graph that we want to take a look at is the acceleration versus time graph. Now, acceleration is the slope of the velocity graph. And for the first half of our velocity graph, we had a constant positive slope. For the second half of this graph, we had a constant negative slope. So the acceleration is just going to be for the first half is going to be a horizontal line up to 10 seconds. And then we're going to have a horizontal line again. beyond 10 seconds until 20 seconds. Now, what happens right here at 10 seconds? Well, we're having one of those instant jumps in terms of the acceleration. Like we saw when we were studying the constant velocity model, we would just have like instant jumps sometimes in velocity because we didn't yet know a way of dealing with like, how do I change my velocity? And so we've got smoother position versus time graphs now, but um, we still do have this slight bit of non-realistic, like we can't just right here, we can't just instantly have a new velocity right here. We can't just instantly have a new acceleration, but it's close enough. It gets the point across for um, measuring our motion and it works well enough. So it's true that we don't just instantly jump accelerations. Uh, we would have to have some kind of transition there. And so this velocity versus time graph wouldn't truly be a point for realistic, perfectly realistic motion. But this constant acceleration model comes close enough to modeling the, the motion of this person. And so um, we will take it as is.